Do you know what is a 4 by 3 spool valve and how does it work? Or are you able to read this schematic symbol? Can we use normally open or normally closed expressions for a directional control valve? In the previous video, as you saw, I had classified the directional control valves and talked about their actuation methods as well. In this video, I am going to answer these questions and talk about a more common directional control valves classification method in the industry that I strongly believe will help you a lot in practice. One thing I really ask you is not to be a passive audience and ask your questions, leave your ideas and comments about this video or future videos. Alright, let's dive in. Spool valves, as a subcategory of directional control valves, are central to every hydraulic and pneumatic system. For instance, they are a part of this scissors lift's hydraulic power system. Or take our previous video's example for a pneumatic spool valve to control the material coming out of a silo or a hopper. Before I continue, let's first have a short overview of the whole system. Every hydraulic and pneumatic power system consists of these sections. Energy supply or power supply elements, like a hydraulic service unit or a compressor and so on. Control elements, like directional control valves. And of course, power or drive elements that execute the commands, like cylinders, hydraulic motors, etc. Okay, let's move on to the main subject of this video. The general components of a spool valve are like this. A spool, which is a cylindrical component. Operator, which we have talked about it extensively in the previous video. And of course, there might be more than one operator. Body or housing. And maybe springs on one or both ends. The spool moves within the bore of the housing. Some holes are machined on the body of the housing to open the fluid passages into or from the valve. These holes are known as ports and are connected to the other hydraulic or pneumatic circuit components. The spool is a cylindrical shaft that, as you see, has some lens and undercuts to block or open the path for the fluid toward the power components in the circuit and vice versa. The term directional control valve or the term spool valve is a very general expression to describe a valve. This is a so-called 3 by 2 directional control valve or a 3 by 2 spool valve. To be more specific, we use these numbers. But what do these numbers mean? We should see how many ports or ways the valve has. Here, there are three ports, right? That's why the first digit is 3. Second of all, we should specify how many positions the spool can take within the valve. Or, in other words, how many flow paths this valve has. The answer will define the second digit. As you see, this valve has two positions. Now, let's take a look at its symbol. Each switching position of a directional control valve is shown by a simple square. Each port of the valve has a particular number or an alphabet that is defined by its application. For instance, this port is known as P, as it will be connected to the power supply or energy supply unit. This port is known as T, as it will return the fluid to the tank or reservoir. This port is known as service port, working port or actuator port and will be shown by A or B. These ports are connected to the drive or power components of the circuit, like cylinders or motors. In the first or the normal position of the spool, the fluid path is like this. Port P is blocked, and the service port A is connected to the tank port T. So, inside the relevant square, I'll draw a horizontal line in front of port P to show it is blocked, and an arrow from port A toward port T. In the second position of the spool, 
where the operator of the valve is actuated, the T port becomes closed and port P becomes open, and as a result, the fluid flows toward the actuator. Inside the square, I'll put an arrow from port P toward port A. And this time, I put a block sign for port T. As a rule of thumb, bear in mind that, in the directional control valve symbols, we always consider the service ports on top and the rest of the ports under the square. In order to shape the final symbol of this 3 by 2 wave valve, I also have to add the operators to their appropriate positions. Keep in mind that, in every symbol, the square just beside an operator shows the flow path while the operator is active. The square without an operator will show the normal or unactuated position of the valve. By the way, I have extensively explained the operators of the DCVs in the previous video. To sum up this section, you may find the symbols on every directional control valve to show their function. Without them, we cannot find out the exact function of the valve just by looking at them. All of the patterns I have mentioned for this 3 by 2 way spool valve are also true for other types of spool valves, other directional control valves like puppet valves and even pressure valves. So, according to the applications and standards for both hydraulic and pneumatic systems, we have 2 by 2, 3 by 2, 4 by 2, 4 by 3, and 5 by 2 way spool valves. For pneumatic systems only, we have another common valve known as a 5 by 3 way valve. Remember that these are the most common types of spool valves, and for specific applications, like hydraulic mobile devices, we might have special designs such as 6 by 4 way valves. As you see, the middle or unactuated position of the three position spool valves have five different configurations that we can analyze in detail in a separate video. Now that we have discussed another type of directional control valve classification, I'm going to discuss normally open and normally closed directional control valves as I promised in the beginning. You might ask, is it basically a sound idea to call a directional control valve normally open or normally closed? Well, yes and no. To make the long story short, this is only true for two and three port valves. But let's see why. For a two by two way valve, as you see, the valve has two ports and two spool positions. If in the normal or unactuated position of the valve, the spool blocks the P or power port, we can call it a normally closed two way valve with this symbol. But if we change the internal design of the valve in such a way that in the normal position, the P and A ports are connected and the passage toward the actuator is open, then this valve is called a normally open valve. Don't forget to relocate the squares with each other in the symbol. In the same way, for a 3 by 2 way valve, while the normal position of the spool closes the P or power port, the valve is called a normally closed valve. On the contrary, while in the normal position of the valve, the passage from the P port to the service port A is open, the valve is called a normally open directional control valve. For the other types of spool valves with more than three ports, it obviously cannot be correct as they have more than one passage for the fluid. Accordingly, we can classify directional control valves into binary, discrete, and proportional types. I will show you that these valves are not only used as shutoff valves or direct the fluid toward different passages, but are also used to control the flow rate of the fluid. So stay tuned for the next videos and share this one on the other social media. Thank you for watching.